A few years ago, uh, more like 20, we found something very remarkable buried inside of string theory. This is a something that's happened a lot. We found something remarkable in the 60s. We found something remarkable in the 70s. We found something remarkable in the 90s. And then more recently, we found something, again, more remarkable. In the 90s, there are these bubblings of something called holographic principles, where if you're having a hard time understanding something, uh, put all the problem on the surface, and then sometimes that problem, the mathematical structure, can change forms and allow you to solve your problem on the surface, and then translate back to the volume and get the job done. This is very, very general, called holographic principles, holographic ideas, And a kind of holographic principle was discovered inside of string theory. Now, this principle is not proven. It is conjectured. People suspect, string theorists say that they're on the road to proving it and they should prove it pretty soon. They said the same thing about string theory itself back in the Reagan administration. So, you know, you you judge how much you want to believe that. The name for this is a fantastically boring name. It's called the ADS CFT correspondence. Like, not great branding, but we got to go with it. And it's an application of these holographic principles inside of string theory. Here's what's going on. Here's first the ADS. ADS stands for anti-dissitter. Dissitter was a dude who monkeyed around a lot with general relativity and possible universes and what those universes might be made of. Pretty interesting guy. He constructed especially one kind of space-time that was completely empty. A universe, like imagine a universe that's totally empty, uh, but has a positive cosmological constant. And so you get accelerated expansion kind of sort of looks like our universe and where our universe looks very closely to what's called a dissider universe. An anti-dissider universe is one that is completely empty of matter but has negative cosmological constant. Doesn't look anything like our universe. Okay, but whatever, that's the ADS and ADS CFT. The other part, CFT, stands for conformal field theory. Conformal field theory is a very, very fancy way of saying, hey, if you've got a physical system that you're looking at and there's some like energy or like strength of interaction or energy scale involved and the physics doesn't really change if you start adjusting the strength of that interaction or the strength of the energy in the system, you always get the same output. That's called scale invariant, and a certain kind of special case of scale invariant is called conformally invariant for invariant for various nerdy mathematical reasons. Almost all the time, when a physicist says conformal conformally invariant, they really mean scale invariant. A conformal field theory is a mathematical description of a problem that looks like that, that is scale invariant. An example I like to give is if you were to put different kinds of gas with different octane levels in your car, but you still get the same miles per gallon and your engine runs exactly the same, your engine would be scale invariant and your engine would probably be conformally invariant. And if you had a mathematical theory of explaining that, that would be a conformally a conformal field theory, a CFT. It's a quantum theory under this very strict set of conditions. Almost all of the universe is not scale invariant at all. Everything changes with energy scales, different energy scales, different strengths of interactions. It all changes all the time. So like there's very, very little, very, very few examples in our universe of scale invariant, conformally invariant systems. Okay, so what you have with the ADS-CFT correspondence is if you construct a string theory in an anti dissider universe, it can connect to a quantum field theory on the boundary of that universe. It, but that quantum field theory must be conformally invariant. Okay, so if you've got a string theory problem, 
and you, you're trying to solve it, but you can't because we haven't cracked string theory. Maybe you can map that problem onto the surface of that space time. And now you have a quantum field theory and we've been solving quantum field theories for decades. Maybe you can solve your problem there and then translate it back and you get some result inside of string theory. You kind of like bypass the ugliness of string theory. Or you can go the other way. If you're trying to solve some really nasty, thorny quantum field problem and you just can't quite do it, well, you can translate it over to string theory. In string theory, we don't have a string theory, but we have a lot of tools. It's a pretty big toolkit. We've got lots of tricks of the trade that we've been building up for decades. Maybe you can find some way to solve your problem there and then map it back and you can solve your real world problem. Not a bad idea. This is called the ADS CFD correspondence. It's conjectured, not totally proven. We think it might be true though, but you know, you never know. As you can might imagine, not the most useful thing in the world. Um, like the vast majority of physics problems that we actually encounter in our universe are not conformally invariant. So like, that's not a good description of it. And if you're trying to go the other way of understanding string theory using these techniques, well, this string theory, this correspondence only works if the string theory works in an anti disitter universe, which is not our universe. Still, there have been some attempts uh, of using this technique, the ADS-CFT correspondence, uh, some questions in strong nuclear force quark-gluon plasmas, which interestingly takes string theory back to its 1960s roots, uh, and over to black holes. The information paradox, if you do a calculation using this correspondence, you get a calculation of how information can be stored on the boundary of a black hole and then released through Hawking radiation, potentially resolving the paradox. Uh, there are some condensed matter problems that might be solved using these techniques. It's a pretty cool idea. It's worth investigating. Its utility, though, is still up for debate. And that's what I'm going to get to next time. I'm going to I'm gonna really dig into uh, just how useful is all this string theory business anyway. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter and uh, do all the youtube -y stuff. And if you've got a hard problem, have you tried putting it in a hologram? Just an idea. <laughs>